Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 79 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am auto-crafting ritual stones, and as you can see, I've got some cool stuff planned up here. So, I took a look last episode at fixing up my AE system, and while doing that, I was spending a little bit of time considering how all the automation is going to work up here, and I came up with the following plan. Um, what I would like to do, I think is focus on making sure that we have pretty much the ability to auto craft all the different types of uh things that we would want within the a uh with, within the blood magic um alchemy system so if we take a look at catalysts we'll find that there's three basic types of catalysts the simple catalysts which are already auto crafting the strengthened catalyst um you know which is something we're also kind of already auto crafting and then the concentrated catalyst now concentrated catalysts really aren't used in chemistry all that much they can be used to um give you more gas tears or they can be used to make cracked runic plates, which have a specific purpose when it comes to um, custom spell making, but that's pretty much their main purpose. And runic plates, I think, are the same, mostly built around um, custom spell making, right? And imbued runic plates, also built around custom spell making. And then finally, soul runic plates, also involved in custom spell making. So, Honestly, the concentrate catalyst will probably want some of these, but we really don't need an auto crafting thing for the cracked runic plate, I don't think. Um, but we might go ahead and do those anyway. But if we take a look at simple catalysts, we'll see that there are, and excluding the binding agents, which are used for potion making, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different types of component. So let's call these nine components tier one components for alchemy. And then we've got the strength and catalyst. For this, we've got one, two, three, not counting the concentrated, four, five, and six total tier two alchemy components, right? So I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to move this alchemy set up here to uh, something back here. So we're gonna have one, two, and three altars that are dedicated just to making the catalysts, okay? So that we'll always have those on hand. And then uh, the tier one catalyst uh, production can go over here and we'll wind up with nine total cases. And then the tier two one can be over here and we'll wind up with six total cases. Does that sound like kind of a cool plan? And I think that'll look nice too. So you can see I've kind of mapped out how I want this to look and it looks like it's gonna fit pretty well. So let's do a couple things. We're going to first get this guy in here, get that guy in there, and get that guy in there. And then we can remove all this smooth stone that's all over the darn place because we don't want any of this stuff anymore. Cool. And what I'm thinking is we should be able to automate all of the alchemy needs that we're going to have. Now, also this episode, um, because a lot of this is going to be a little bit of repeat, I'm going to try and hurry through this part because the next thing I want to do is summon an elemental so that I can get myself a master blood shard. And that's going to be pretty useful for me because it's going to allow me to get some of the higher tier stuff from blood magic. I'm going to try and get all this done between uh, this episode and next so that uh, when I give you guys the world upload next episode, episode we should be uh in pretty good shape so let's get you going dun 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 and you dun 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 and finally you nice love it when a plan comes together so we'll put this guy here, here and here. So you know I could have the middle one be simple catalyst or Maybe I'll have this guy be simple because everything that's being crafted over here is using simple catalysts. Um, the one on the left here can be the, um, the the middle tier catalyst because everything over here will use that. And then the center in the back will be the, um, the, the top tier catalyst. And we'll have to see about how we're going to do if we're going to do anything else in there. Does that sound kind of like a plan? I hope so because that is what we're going to do. Um, and at this point, I'm really kind of wishing that I hadn't, um, I, I didn't realize I was going to have as much cabling in here as I do. So I'm thinking I might even want to, like, how bad of an idea would it be to, yeah, like maybe just have 
maybe even two blocks deep. I, I don't think that would be terrible. And then I don't have to do covers and micro blocks and all that stuff all over the darn place. I can just have like a whole floor right here dedicated to, you know, doing what I'm doing. I think that seems like kind of a cool idea, right? So let me, let me get some more of these arcane stone blocks because I think I want them to still be like the combination. I want it to be arcane stone blocks on the ceiling of the first floor and on the, you know, floor of the second floor. So what do I need to get some more of those things? Um, I just need to, yeah, make some ar arcane. All right. So I'm going to go do that off camera, get that built, and then we'll come back on camera to rearrange the AE system in the um, blood magic area and work within that spot. And hopefully by the end of this episode, we'll have a super automated alchemy system. Oh man, I love the Builder's Wand. I know I said I was going to do this off camera, but I just wanted you guys to see how great building with the Builder's Wand is. One of the things I always hate about, you know, vanilla Minecraft is how long it really takes to build something like really large scale. And things like the Builder's Wand really make this just that much easier, right? So, nice. So that is awesome. But I'm also thinking I might want to do, so if we break a hole here so we've still got the elevator here so if uh, i've got like this now just two block tall space for me to do any custom work i want to do with like automation and ae stuff maybe if i got another elevator so let's swap this out for this and put my chisel away don't need him anymore can put the arcane stone blocks away and the extra ritual stones i have and get an elevator cool and I should be able to get, I guess I used gray dye, is that right? What I'm actually thinking here now is if I dye this thing gray, nice. Um, what I'm thinking now, awesome that is cool and i might eventually make this whole floor area something like that um you know arcane stone block stuff but we'll see for now at least i don't need that extra step there which kind of solves a problem that i had so long ago that i almost forgot about it so uh now let me rearrange some wiring there we go and i will be right back All right, guys, so I re-ran my cables through here. We no longer have to worry about facades and all that stuff downstairs, which is nice. Uh, I can cover this all up now, and then we just, that's about it, right? So um, coming looping around here, let's actually cover this up outside rather than inside. So I'm going to remove this facade and probably that one as well. And then on the outside, we'll cover it so that we can still see and access everything from the interior area. See what I'm saying there? And I'll just snag this, put the facade on if I can. I guess I don't have another facade. All right, that's fine. So I'll put this back here. That should be cool. So from the inside of this little hidden area now, we can see the following. Cool. So we've got our uh, P2P network connecting here, connecting here and connecting over here. And this will give us plenty of options for running as well over to here and get these guys up and running. So that should be pretty cool. Um, what we're probably gonna want next is a couple more interfaces. So let's do six interfaces. Hopefully I have the stuff for that in there. Oh, missing nether quartz. Looks like I have to visit the nether. All right, I'll be back after I've done that. All right, uh, about five or ten minutes worth of mining later, and I should have lots of nether quartz now. Let's see how I made out. Not bad. So now can I request interface time six, I hope? Hooray! Cool. So I'll get those crafted up, and then I'll be ready to start automating and changing around a couple things. We're also going to want a couple more level emitters. So I've got one. Uh, I'm going to definitely want at least two more, I think. So let's get one, two, and that'll do for now. And let's get ready with our catalyst items that we're going to want. So we already pretty much have those ready to go. Um, bone meal and nether wart is what's needed for those. Let's get the concentrated catalyst ready. Oh, we need fractured bones. 
All right, so that's four bones and gunpowder in a chemistry set. That ain't so bad. I should be able to manage that. We'll work on that in a little bit, actually. Maybe I'll throw that into one of the two types. But for now, our interfaces should be ready. Six. Awesome. Let's get ourselves some P2Ps going as well. Let's request two more of them. Oh, missing an engineering processor. Let's get diamonds. We'll throw about 16 of them in here, and that should get that going pretty quick and easy. We'll need a little bit more redstone while we're at it. Really, really big time to do auto-crafting these and keeping the right amount available at all times, but we'll get there. How am I for silicon, by the way? Pretty good. I'll get this cooking as well for us. All right, let's get up to Blood Magic V2 and get down here to start working. I also considered how I could light it up for you guys to be able to see a little better, but for now I think it's all right, and I might throw some kind of torch. I could just throw around a couple blood lamps. That probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. But let's see. So we're definitely going to want an interface here and here, right? So I'll always have it kind of on the left in the back. There. That's not at all what I meant to do. And there. Cool. And then left and back. So we'll clear this out. And that out. Nice. So that's going to be a total of six. We're going to need, in the end, a level emitter at each spot. So total, we need nine connections. So I might want to do some dense cable here as a result of that. But let's run this up, get our P2P connected and loaded, and then we'll work on that bit. So if we were looking here, I'm going to go into bat mode because it'll be easier to see everything. But here's where we want these guys to be. So let's do this. Let's do... Let's load the P2P at here. Load. We'll have some dense cabling going like this. And then we're going to want a level emitter right here, right? So we'll connect to this line, with this thing, and then we'll do one, two, three, with the level emitter sitting, hopefully, if I can get it in there, on the top. Like that, right? That should be cool. And if we check, that's using... In the end, three channels, once the level emitter and everything else connects. There we go. Three channels in use. Nice. Um, the remaining is going to need six, so we can probably just do this with regular old cabling. So I'll run this here, and then if I ever need more, I just have to extend the dense cabling stuff. That shouldn't be a problem. So all the way to here. Level emitter and connection. Cool. And then back here somewhere, there it is. So we'll just come off this line. And we'll hit the level emitter first. And then you and you. Sweet. So that in total should wind up being six channels in use once everything comes online, and this is three for a total of nine. Beautiful. Uh, plus the two here, two here, and two here. So that should be 15 channels in use, right, in the Blood magic -y area. Let's see if that's correct. 
17. We have two more somewhere. Uh, I think it's underground. Yeah, 17 total. That's the underground spot. But this guy, the P2P connection, is using six. So we can put two more P2P endpoints on here um, before we run out of this cable, right? And that should be cool. All right. So, so far, this is looking pretty solid. Let's jump back up there. And let's get these guys configured for use. So um, we're going to want to activate these with weak activation crystals. Don't forget to do that. So one, two, three. And I should probably snag while I'm at it. Let's go down to base. We want the alchemic chemistry sets. Cool. So one, two, three more of these guys with an orb. Awesome. One, two, three. And I said the simple catalyst will be down here on the right because I'm going to have this do all the simple catalyst stuff, right? So let's get ourselves a simple catalyst out of the AE system. Wow, I've got a lot of those, don't I? Oh, you know what? <laughs> probably from all the times that this is, uh, whoops. That's probably been running this whole time. We're out of glowstone. Derp. I disconnected that level emitter and forgot about that setting. Oh, well. Uh, so I'll clear this out. And how are we for things here? Cool, I've got 12 Terre. How many did I say to keep of that? So we're all good with this thing, right? Yeah, we're good there. 10 catalysts. Okay. I have to go get more glowstone in a minute, but let me at least configure this. So you're going to look at this guy, and you're going to emit when levels are above or equal to 20. That sounds like a good number, right? Cool. All right, let me go get more glowstone, and then we'll be back. All right, so let's configure this thing again. We're going to put our simple catalyst up here. We're going to configure this guy to have two redstone, a glowstone, a sugar, and a gunpowder. Cool. And not two gunpowders. And we should probably go ahead and instruct him to be able to craft. We'll probably have to have multiple crafting cards in these things, but that'll be all right. Cool. So if I pull this sugar out, it should be able to auto craft another one. Awesome. Cool. So that should be good. Um, let's go ahead and just take catalysts out of the system. So if we clear this out of here, it should now start crafting. Cool. I just have to get some orbs, but that's okay. We'll get around to that. And then if I put these back in the system, it should stop crafting. I don't know if it'll stop, like, pull out of here, but that's okay. We'll be cool. If I pop downstairs, actually, and just snag this orb that's in here at the moment, I should be okay. We'll see that it won't fill it with another set of ingredients. Right? Check. And it stayed in there because the ritual's off at the moment. Cool. All right, so let's do something similar down here uh, for the other orb type. So we're going to want strengthened catalyst for this thing. So I'll probably have to go into bat mode to get underneath the wiring in here, but that's okay. So let's request strengthened catalysts out of our network. And again, we'll tell it to keep about 20 in there at all times, emit when above. So right now it's not emitting a redstone signal, which is cool. And strengthen catalysts require two catalysts, bone meal, and nether wart. Okay, so let's say um, two catalysts, bone meal, and nether wart.
cool. And as a result, if I put strength and catalysts in here, this should run a couple times. Cool. Oh, not strength and catalysts. <laughs> Regular catalysts. Cool. So that should cook up, automatically go into the system, and be done because we now have 20 of those catalysts. Nice. If I take some out, you'll see it's crafting again. And once I put them back in, it should be cool not to run anymore. Awesome. I'll do the uh, third one in a bit, but now let's rearrange some of this stuff. All right, guys. So I'm going to start programming uh, what I need to do for this thing. So let's see. Uh, simple catalyst. If I want to get the wind one, it's glowstone, gas tier, and two feathers. So let me just snag some glowstone here. That should get it cooking. So glowstone, gas tier, and two feathers. Let's actually steal this for a sec. Glowstone, gas tier, and two feathers. You're gonna see a problem. And don't worry, because I am going to solve that problem in a minute. But you will see a problem in a minute. But watch, let's see what happens. So we should have Aether now. And if we were to place Aether in here, he should start auto-crafting Aether. Nice. So let's let this guy be Aether. And you can see I've got nine slots now, because remember I said there's going to be nine types. And um, if we check, we should have one here that we can use. So we're going to say... Um, same thing we said before, right? We're going to configure this guy. Instead of Strength and Catalyst, we'll do Aether, right? And we'll just say, hey, cool. So that redstone signal is illuminating. And what should be happening is as soon as I connect this cable, which I disconnected, you can see I've kind of mapped out for a little bit more spacing up here. So let's see, we'll have this. We're going to probably want to extend this a little bit further back. So we'll do one, two. We'll bump this up along here. That should be cool. And then I've got a few more item ducts to go in here. And these guys will all be item ducts too. But let's get the servos on this. So we'll do you and you. And these guys should all be retrievers on the top. One, two, three, four. This guy is going to need an item duct and a retriever. Cool. And these guys can all be servos. So those guys are retrievers. Those guys are retrievers. This guy has to be a retriever. And I'm going to need one more impulse item duct. All right, this will be good for now. Let's reconnect this thing and just see if it works. Oh, no, wait. Nope, because I need um, this thing, I think, is what used to be the strength and catalyst. has to be configured with Aether. And this thing can stay as is. Cool. So Aether should get pulled out of there. There it goes. Nice. Awesome. And as soon as we have 10 Aethers available, it should go back. So I'll come back in a minute. I want to make a few more impulse item ducks and sleep through the night and make sure this works. All right, guys. So I've done a little bit of uh, prep work here. I've got some cables ready to go. Um, I am going to need nine total items on this line. So we're going to need nine level emitters, which means we're going to need to do dense cabling coming out of here. But that's OK. Uh, this is all in the name of a really fun build that I'm having a good time making. So uh, you can see we've got all the different colors here. That looks cool. And we've got pretty much everything we need. So the only thing we need to do now is let's get another one of these things set. So um, let's take a look at catalysts and see what would be another easy thing to go with. So we've already done Aether. I could do Sanctus, which is Glowstone, Gold Nugget, Glass. Okay, so Gold Nugget and Glass. Uh-oh. I've only got one spot left here. I could throw another interface over here. But I feel like that's not going to work because I'm only going to get eight more slots. And I know because I looked that I'm going to need eight more things. So 
how to handle said problem. Let's go into bat mode. I'm gonna get three more interfaces. So remember the goal here is to keep either this inventory or this inventory stocked with all the stuff that we need. We've kind of run out of room over here. We only have room for one more thing. And if we had an interface over here, we'd only have eight more slots, but I think I need about 15 more slots to be able to craft all nine types of items that I want to be able to auto craft in this mechanic. So check this out. I'm going to grab interfaces done and done. And I'm going to put one here. and here, and eventually I will probably want one here. So let's get ourselves How are we going to make sure that this looks cool? This should work. Yes. Uh, I'm going to do Not that one, this one. This should activate all three here. And if we watch this, it should go from two to five channels in use, in theory. Nice, cool. So all three interfaces are hooked up now. So if I were to put something in there, for example, a piece of glowstone, boom. If I did this here, it would, okay, cool. So that means it's working, nice. So let's grab, a nifty device. Have I even used these at all this season? I don't know. But we're going to use translocators for this. Uh, so I have made them. I'm going to want another set. So let's get ourselves a piston. So we've got four item translocators. We're also going to want some diamond nuggets. You guessed it. And we're going to go up there. And remember, what do we need? We need gold nuggets. Did I ever teach my AE system how to craft these? I did. That was very smart of me. So gold nuggets and glass. And let's get ourselves a crafting module while we're at it. Nope, not easy. Crafting module requires crafting table times two. I'm gonna snag two of these just so I have them handy. So what I'm going to do is translocate onto this chest. So take a look. I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to put the diamond nugget on it. And I'm going to not do that. I'm going to right click it so that it's allowing items in, right? I'm going to say you're allowed to have one gold nugget and one piece of glass. Um, it might be a little bit of a nuisance, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm only going to have nine slots to regulate on. I did not plan for that eventuality. That's going to be a problem for me, I think. Hmm. Well, let's let it go and then we'll see what happens. So this one is where I will put gold nuggets and glass. Cool. And uh, I will put this here. Boom. So they went in. So every time gold nugget or glass is used, it should just snag another one from here and drop it in there. So the only problem then that I have to run into, I could tap into the bottom of this chest and that should allow me to have 18 slots. So that's probably what I'll do. Yeah, I'll do from here, I'll hit the bottom of the chest. Cool. That should totally work. So I should be able to do here and here. Um, if I re, well, no, I couldn't do on this side because this thing is definitely being used. So the only other sides of this chest that are available are the top. I don't think I need to worry that much. I think I'll be all right with what I've got. So I could have another translocator, for example, here with this and that and this. Cool. Now, just for curiosity's sake, if I put this in here, not that. Yeah, you're just going to keep going, aren't you? Okay. Just wanted to be sure. Cool. So that should allow me to regulate 18 item types in this chest. I think that'll work. So I really don't even need, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove this. I don't think I need it for this time being. 
and we'll put this guy back here. Cool? So that should work. So now, if I wanted to, I've got gold and glass. So what was it? Gold, glass. We want a catalyst. And two glowstone. And remember, we're already stocking the glowstone, so we should be cool there. So that's Sanctus. I'm going to get one more of them. Nice. So that worked, right? Very cool. Um, I'm going to put Sanctus in. Let's do this one. But only one Sanctus can go in there at the time being, I'm sorry to say. And we can put away our diamond nuggets. I don't really need them. So one Sanctus goes in there. And then we'll just go to the matching side over here. We'll make sure that, um, so that's the red one. So that was sand. It's going to be Sanctus now. And then we're going to put a level emitter on this thing. And we're going to say 10 or more Sanctus. And we're actually going to lower level it. Cool. Nice. So there goes the Sanctus, comes on out, goes over there. And once we have 10 Sanctus, it should go away. Nice. So let's get started on the next one. Uh, I'm going to configure for, let's snag one of these and see what we can use it for. The next one that should be easy to set up will be two cobblestone, two gunpowder. Are either of those configured in here at the moment? No. So let's get some gunpowder and cobblestone. So we will do two cobblestone, two gunpowder, two gunpowder, two cobblestone. And this should be good here. Nice. And I'll even snag one more just so that I can do this. So two cobblestone, two gunpowder, and the simple catalyst. With me so far? This should cook up. I don't even know what it's used for, but we're going to check it out. So Sanctus, we should be at a decent amount now. So if we put that away, boom, it gets pulled out. We have the extra Sanctus here because I put it back in the A system, but that's cool. And that landed there. Nice. So we're going to snag another one of these. This thing should auto craft. There we go. Cool. You can go in here. We'll close both these and we'll use Crepitus over here, it's gonna be the far right one, so you're gonna be able to retrieve Crepitus. And this, by the way, was the blue. So let's go find the blue one. That is right here. So we're going to do this, this, this. Cool. And we will say Crepitus, cool. So that should extract Crepitus from the system, I think. There it goes, nice. So see how easy this is? I'm gonna go repeat this five more times for each of the different types that I can. There's a couple that I might need to set up auto crafting around. Like in particular, uh, I know for a fact I'm gonna have trouble and have to do something special for this guy because he requires a lava bucket. So anything else that's really tricky? Uh, ice and snow, I might need to do some auto crafting around those guys, but you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Ink sacks, I know we have some water bottles we might need to do some special stuff for, um, but Tenebre, Magicalis, I shouldn't have too many problems with those guys. That is cool. So this is what I'm gonna call a completed build. Everything else that I have to do on this is just repeat work that you guys have already seen. So I really don't wanna spend a whole bunch of time on camera just repeating myself over and over and over again. Um, but why don't I put away Crepitus. So I'll throw this in here. So that's nine. Once we hit 10, boom, it should pull out. Awesome, that is perfect. And away it goes back to there. Perfect. This is actually a build that I'm really pleased with. It is cool. It's really cool. All right, so I'm going to wrap up this build. I will um, fill in everything off camera. Um, but what I think I want to do is maybe get ready to fight a demon. 
oh man, I definitely had a lot of fun off camera or on camera, I guess, doing this build because I've run out of time for the episode. So I guess what I'll do is wrap up the episode here. I'm going to come back next time. We will configure auto crafting for some of the things that we're going to need to auto craft for this. So in particular, we're going to look at auto crafting things like buckets of lava, which I'm sure some other systems in the AA network could use. So it's not going to be just for this. We can use that bucket of lava auto crafting for probably a bunch of other stuff. What else will we have to do? Ice and snow. We'll want to be able to auto craft that. Water bottles. And that's probably about it. Maybe even clay. Wouldn't be bad to auto craft clay. I should be able to build a system that can auto craft clay. And then we're going to fight a demon. And then we're going to have a master blood shard. And then we're going to have a world download. That is the plan for the next uh, couple episodes. So for now, it's time to wrap up. So Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll be back next time. Uh, lots more fun to be had with this whole uh, system. I'm really having a good time automating alchemy from um, Blood Magic, and I hope you guys are enjoying checking it out as well. I'm going to make a few more blood orbs. Let's see. What was the master blood orb? 25,000? I can handle that. That should be easy peasy. I'm going to get three of them specifically to place in the three things upstairs there. Cool. All right, guys. Dial 20 signing off. Take it easy.